Hey, welcome to CNC Router Projects. Not long ago, I was working on a project that required a 3 16th inch wide, 3 8th inch deep slot along the edge of some relatively short lengths of 1x3. In that instance, I ended up standing the boards on their edge, butting them up against a fence, and using scrap wood on the sides and ends to hold it in place. Referencing off the fence, a 1 8th inch bit was used to pocket out the slots. Now this approach actually worked out okay, but it's not ideal and it does have some real limitations. For instance, if the boards had been wider, they would have been inherently less stable standing on edge and may have needed different fixturing. Also, after a certain board width, limits of the z-axis would become a problem. In addition, boards that exceed the dimensions of the CNC's workspace would also be harder to work with using this approach. So when a similar project using longer and wider boards came up, I knew I needed to try something different. In this case, I decided to use my CNC like a traditional non-CNC router table. It's possible to perform a number of basic router table tasks just by adding a fence. Unlike the adjustable fences on most traditional router tables, this is a simple, fixed, continuous fence. It's nothing more than a straight edge, in this case running along the y-axis of the workspace, with an offset near the middle in which the router is positioned. I had some scrap 3 quarter inch MDF lying around, so that's the material I ended up using. To make the slots, I needed a different type of bit, specifically the appropriately named slot cutter. To position the slot cutter, I'm going to first center it within the fence offset area. Since the edge of the fence sits 9 inches from the side of the table, and the slot cutter has a radius of 15 sixteenths of an inch, an X value of 9 and 15 sixteenths should place the cutter flush with the edge of the fence. With that confirmed, I can now move the bit over 3 eighths of an inch to set the desired depth of cut. In terms of height, I'd like the slot positioned in the middle of the board, so I'll subtract the 3 16th inch curve of the cutter from the 3 quarter inch thickness of the material and divide by 2. This tells me I want 9 30 seconds of an inch between the spoil board and the bottom edge of the cutter. I found some quarter inch MDF and a thin metal shim to act as a spacer. One problem I encountered was that the arbor of the slot cutter was so long I was unable to lower the blade to the correct height. I considered placing a shim under the material to raise it, but instead decided to pocket out a small area of the spoil board to allow the bit to be lowered further. With the depth of cut and the height all set, it's finally time to cut a slot. And that couldn't have turned out much better. I've also used this CNC as a table router approach to good effect in making grooves, dados, and rabbits. Finally, when routing in this manner, I always make a point to feed the material through in a direction that opposes the force that would naturally be exerted by the bit. In this example, a bit spinning in a clockwise fashion will be trying to move the material toward me, so I want to be feeding through in the opposite direction. In the CNC world, cutting type, either climb or conventional, doesn't really have safety implications. But in manual applications like this, it certainly can. 